It was all in all a pretty unedifying uh, spectacle, really, Greg. But let's get Isabel's view first as well. Isabel um, talks international editor. Uh, very good morning to you. Um, I think we can all agree Kamala Harris did a lot better than anyone thought she would. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not a natural Kamala Harris supporter, so I would have probably had my sceptical hat on uh, watching this. And actually, I think she put in a really solid performance. You know, there's so much negativity about her from those on the Conservative side that she's not up to it, she's stupid, she can't manage without a script. None of that came across. You know, this wasn't very obviously scripted. She managed more than fine. And I think she had him on the back foot on a number of things. Uh, the standout moment, as, as we said in the headlines there, was this frankly fatuous claim from Trump that there are uh, people eating, immigrants eating cats and dogs, people's pets uh, in parts of America. Uh, quite laughable. You imagine if a politician, a, a, a leadership candidate said something like that in this country, that would be the end of their career. Uh, but this being America, you know, mo mostly what it's already triggered is some very entertaining memes. Yeah, well, there's certainly an awful lot of those going on. And we've got that clip, I think. Uh, here's Trump talking about it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. And, of course, um, you know, um, Greg Swenson's sort of chuckling there. I mean, the, the point is, is that, you know, the thing is, Isabel, there are, there are memes, but there also are uh, pieces of footage. There are many conversations being had in Springfield uh, about this. And so it is one of those things that I think Trump's fans and Trump supporters will go along with, and those who don't like him will go, well, he's talking absolute rubbish. And that's the problem, it seems to me, with the American system. You know, because I don't think anyone was won over by either of these candidates last night. I don't think anybody neutral who doesn't know which way to vote has yet decided and I mean everyone who loves Donald Trump still loves him and everyone who hates him still hates him well I, I only semi agree with that and obviously speaking as an outsider I'm not in America I'm not fully immersed in the public mood there but I think that a lot of people who doubted that Kamala Harris was up to it might feel a little bit more confident about her. Um, as for the dogs and cats, the Trump campaign sure as hell better find some dead or eaten dogs and cats and some people <laughs> to testify that this thing is real. Otherwise, they really have got a problem. But there were some properly interesting things that came out of the debate. In particular, I was struck by Trump's repeated refusal to say that he thought that the world would be a better place if Ukraine wins that conflict with Russia. Time and again, he was offered the opportunity to do so. You would have thought he would have said, yes, absolutely. You know, Ukraine must be allowed to protect its territorial sovereignty. Uh, he did not do that. And I thought that was very interesting. He also said, by the way, that we'll all be paying a lot more for that conflict if he becomes president, taking very much the same line that he did on contributions to NATO. Uh, you, you remember that actually he managed to increase the pressure very, very significantly on NATO member states to pay more of their share of collective defence. Um, he indicated he'd do exactly the same when it comes to the funding and the support of the campaign uh, to protect Ukraine. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, Kamala Harris, I think, had him on the back foot over uh, dictators. She repeatedly suggested that dictators around the world adore him and uh, can't wait for him to win, and particularly his stance on the Taliban having negotiated uh, with the Taliban leaders at Camp David. David. So I thought that was also very interesting. Yeah, interesting stuff. Let's get um, Greg Swenson's view because an awful lot, again, of all of that international stuff is Trump playing to, to, to the gallery, playing to his uh, supporters. But equally, I think we saw, did we not see Vladimir Putin uh, endorsing Kamala Harris the other day? So, <laughs> you know, none of that was brought up. I just thought he could have been a bit quicker with some of his responses to her instead of being slightly tetchy, which he came across yeah, as. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and plus he went off on these tangents. You yeah. know, he, he changed subjects quickly. We're talking about the border and he brings up student loans and mm -hmm. we're talking about other issues and he brings up the border. You right. know, so he, he was very inconsistent. I don't think he did a great job. Mm. I think it's not fatal, right. but 
you know, it was not a good night for President Trump. And I, I think he, he is a missed opportunity mm. because he could have answered the questions deliberately and slowly. And, you know, you, you know, when he bantered on that clip about the Russia collusion hoax, right. he just said, Russia, 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 like yeah. everyone's going to know what that is. I know what that is. Right. You know what that is. Right. But a lot of the audience would not understand what he was referring to. Mm. He was referring to the fact that the Hillary Clinton campaign made up a complete and fabricated right. collusion hoax yes. and ran with it for two plus years. Right. And and you know that's that's something that that fits in with a lot of the argument that you know he he is he, he was prosecuted mm. you know by the by the weaponization of the justice system right. by the lawfare and that's been in the last year and a half but that started five years ago right. six years ago and, so, the, and the other thing that, that we've got to that, explain that. that he could have made more of and we've got a clip to show in a second I'll come mm. back to Isabel on this as well is is the fact that you know we have a president of the United States of America called Joe Biden yeah. uh, who seems to have disappeared from trace um, you know we see him lying on beaches we see him you know getting in and out of helicopters but we don't see him doing very much work um, have a look at this uh, for from when Trump said that he should wake up. I would say we would both leave this debate right now. I'd like to see her go down to Washington, D.C. during this debate, because we're wasting a lot of time. Go down to, because she's been so bad, it's so ridiculous. Go down to Washington, D.C. and let her sign a bill to close up the border, because they have the right to do it. They don't need bills. They have the right to do it. The President of the United States, you'll get him out of bed, you'll wake him up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right. and you'll say, come on, come on down to the office, let's sign a bill. And that is the thing to attack, I think, on, is it not, yeah. um, Isabel? That's what he should have been doing, attacking on the fact that the government policy currently is down the drain, the fact that the President of the United States spends most of his day asleep, uh, the fact that Kamala Harris has been his running mate and his supporter, and she's now thrown him under the bus by basically saying, I'm not Joe Biden. And if Trump had done that more, he would have done better, I think. Yeah, he did have a great line at one point where he said, you know, we've got a president that doesn't even know if he's alive, which was quite <laughs> funny. But he allowed uh, Kamala Harris to go on the line of, you know, we can't look back, we've got to go to the future. She implied that a Trump presidency, a second Trump presidency, would be just going back to the past of chaos and division. A very classic and easy and frankly lazy line, which he could easily have killed off by saying, well, I'm not too keen on the present, yeah. but where, what you've done has got us. So I think that he, uh, yes, he could have done a lot better on that. And finally, I just don't think he showed any range you know there was no humor there there was no softness there he only seemed to have one setting and i think she did rather better on that yeah i think you're absolutely right i mean greg when we talk about preparation you know i think there was a, an element of of the republican party who thought you know kamala harris is so hopeless look at all these clips of her the one of her talking about you know lipstick on the, the, on the top of the coffee cup yeah. you know she didn't appear to be very coherent in any kind of interview that she's ever done she's only really done one interview with cnn she didn't really answer the question she wasn't pressed on it very much and here's a point of where she was asked about the economy uh, and about what she would do and she went a bit megan markle on it. Your opponent, your opponent on the stage here tonight often asks his supporters, are you better off than you were four years ago? When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid. And I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. She speaks as though she's being followed around by a 28-piece orchestra, you know, who yeah. are constantly playing Land of the Free or something, a Home of the Brave behind her, you know. Yeah. Um, it's all building up into a crescendo, but it doesn't mean anything. No, it's all platitudes. Right. And it's amazing how can, she can speak so much but not really say Without anything. Without saying anything, yeah. But she did it carefully. She did. It, she was well prepared. Yeah. She, she knew which... Get everything she said by would... tomorrow, but the reality is, you know, she that Trump took the bait. He he did not show well at all, and she showed pretty well. And now they're all asking, show, and now they're asking for another debate, aren't they, the Democrats? Do you think he'll agree to it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, he prior to yesterday, he he was saying, "I want three debates." Yeah. 
they don't want they don't want to do it. It's interesting how that's flipped, and it, it, you know it's pretty clear that Kamala had a good night. It yeah. wasn't a great night, but it was a good night. And I think if he does another debate, he'll do better, won't he? I hope so. He's <laughs> got to be better prepared. Mm. You could tell he, he just didn't. He just wasn't on message, and I think he missed a lot of opportunities. You know, I thought he had a good point when he said go down to the White House, but he should do that more clearly and more yes. deliberately, and say you've been in power for three and a half years. And you opened the border mm. on purpose. Exactly, and, and you had that every would... opportunity to to um, to close the border. Yeah, and you don't you didn't need that bill. He's right about that. Yeah, but he forgot to mention that you know that bill that they proposed had very little Republican support, but also it was going to allow. 5,000 illegals a day right. before they close the border. That doesn't sound to me like they're closing the border. That's no. 1.8 million illegal migrants a year. Yeah. And Obama's Homeland Security Office had said that 1,000 a day was mm. a crisis, and he's proposing 5,000 a day. Right. Trump didn't say that. Right. And I guess it comes down, Isabel, um, if you're still there, I'm not sure if you are. Um, <laughs> if you are, it comes down in the end to preparation, doesn't it? I mean, Robert Carville. Um, the uh, the famous sort of Clinton aide who um, was one of the uh, one of the great architects yeah. of the kind of the Clinton two term system and and the changing of luck of the Democrats. He actually put out a tweet last night before the debate to say that Trump's about to walk into a trap, and I think perhaps he might be this morning blaming some of his handlers to say I didn't, why didn't we see any of this coming. Well, there's two things here. I mean, preparation, absolutely. And you've got to have some real zingers, some real one-liners in your back pocket, things that can be pulled out at any excuse and lines that can be repeated, which he didn't do. But it isn't just about uh, preparation. It's also about personality and body language and, and demeanor. And I just didn't think that Trump came across very well on those fronts, whereas I think you know, Kamala Harris, you know, for all the Meghan Markle act, and you know that will be very off-putting to a lot of um, voters in Republican states, you know, she did come across as rather more human than he does and rather warmer and just a little bit more attractive, frankly. He just looked angry. He looked like a kind of um, slightly alarming and slightly uh, off-message dictator. Um, and that is not a good look when you're appealing to voters that haven't made up their minds. No. Quite. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Isabel Oakeshott, uh, James Carville, of course, I meant. I don't know why I yeah. call him Robert Carville. Um, Taylor Swift has now entered the arena as well, just to sort of add a bit of spice to it. She's now come out and said she's going to endorse Kamala Harris. Uh, granted, she's a, a mega star, mm. and I get that. But the celebrities, Hollywood types, musicians, they've always endorsed Democrats. Yeah. It never moves the needle. I mean, it's nice. It was funny, by the way, the cat lady comment at, yeah. the, at the end. So, you know, that was witty. But I don't think she's going to move the needle. She's got a, a, a huge fan base across demographics, but it definitely leans to single women. Yes. Especially younger women. And a lot of women. young women who don't have the vote as well. Yeah, and, and, but, you know, the Democrats already have that demographic. You know, married women vote Republican, they vote yeah. for Trump. Married men and single men. Single women decidedly are, are it's not even close. Yeah. So I don't know that they can improve on that lot very much. So, but it, it was kind of funny. I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. Didn't bother and I mean, of course, the, tr the, the 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 polls haven't come out yet. I guess we'll see those in the next few hours as to whether or not that's moved. It's still very close, isn't it? it it's really close, and it's it's all about momentum and the trend. And you know, obviously, Kamala Mania was really helpful, and and she picked up five points and t basically was tied with Trump ahead maybe one and a half, two points. But she gave that back in the last week. The, yeah. the polls over the weekend, like the Detro Detroit, Michigan polls, which is are important right. because it's Michigan, but also New York Times, Siena, had Trump up one point right. and leading on, on all the major issues. So it's still his his race to lose, mm. but last night was a little speed bump. Yeah, it was a little speed bump. Great, great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks, Mike. Like, so thank you very much indeed as well. Melania Trump also posted a video raising questions about the assassination attempt. We'll